These were military wives who had spent the last decade living on drab bases around the country. And then on April 9th, 1959, their husbands were announced as America's Mercury astronauts. Overnight, their lives changed dramatically. The most surprising thing that I learned about the wives was that they were in their own crazy space program. And from the beginning, they decided that they really couldn't play into their husband's competition, that if there was any way they were going to survive in this new cutthroat NASA world, they were going to have to rely on each other and stay above the competition. They had to be the perfect American wife, the perfect mother, have a beautiful home, sort of have it all and deal with the enormous pressure of their husband going where no other man has ever gone. There was a great emotional cost to landing 12 men on the moon. Any of the marriages that survived throughout the space program um, fell apart. One of them turned to alcohol, another um, committed suicide while the group was planning a reunion. What's really redemptive about this group is that years later they've all come together and really been able to share their true experiences and they continue to support each other and just have this amazing common bond of um, an exclusive club and group of women who um, few will ever know what they went through. But why I was so interested in writing about them is I thought that there really was a redemptive feminist story here to be told, that these were the strong women in the background that were really never given the credit that they deserved. And as many astronauts have pointed out, perhaps we wouldn't have landed on the moon if it weren't for these wives who sort of kept the home fires burning bright back on Earth.